On the 17th of April 2022, a normal spring morning in the county of Cambridgeshire was about to become the centre of attention for the railway. The time is 8.20 in the morning and one of First Group's LUMO services departs from Newcastle for London King's Cross, operating under the head code 1 Yankee 80. The unit taken is one of five Class 803 electric multiple units built by Hitachi in 2020. The service was operating normally and made its way down the East Coast mainline with no problems. Around two hours later, at 10.15, one Yankee 80 was approaching Peterborough Station. This service was not due to stop at Peterborough. One Yankee 80 was currently running four minutes early. However, following behind was one Yankee 1-6, an LNER service which was running 21 minutes late. In an attempt to recover time for the delayed one Yankee 1-6, the signaller made the choice to divert one Yankee 80 onto the up slope line as opposed to the up fast line which it was intended to go down. One Yankee 80 would then rejoin the up fast line after passing the station, allowing one Yankee 16 to overtake one Yankee 80 as one Yankee 16 was supposed to be ahead of one Yankee 80, but this was not true as a result of the delay. On approach to Peterborough station, one Yankee 80 encountered a preliminary caution signal and then a caution signal from Papa 474 signal. At 17 minutes past 10, the unit slowed down to around 32 miles per hour, slowing down and passing Papa 474. At this time, one Yankee 80 was now approaching Papa 468 signal, which was showing a danger aspect. The 10 second timer began, which would release Papa 468 signal from danger to proceed after the 10 seconds had elapsed. After this time, PAPA 468 signal cleared with a route indicator to platform 1 on the up slow line. Several moments later, the aspect changed from danger to proceed. The driver then took power, placing the traction controller into full power. One Yankee 80 was now entering Spittle Junction to the north of Peterborough Station, still building up incredible speeds. Only three seconds before the incident, the driver noticed that the banner repeat of a platform 3, which routed the up fast line, was on, meaning the next signal on that line, Papa 440, was at danger. At this moment, the train was routed off the up fast line, joining the diverging line at 76 miles per hour, three times over the speed limit of the points, that was 25 miles per hour. The Class 803 launched to the left as the forces being applied on the train were extremely intense. We can observe the speed that the train was travelling through the CCTV footage of one Yankee 80 which was released to the public. The driver placed the train into emergency at this time, exiting the points and joining the up slow line, still travelling at around 60 miles per hour. In the passenger compartments, luggage was thrown from the racks and some passengers were thrown around the saloon. One Yankee 80 screeched to a halt at platform 1 moments later. Immediately, the driver of One Yankee 80 contacted the signal, reporting that a major overspeed had just occurred and requesting that the signal in front, Papa 436, be set to danger, while the driver composed themselves as they were fairly shaken from the incident. The driver was unaware at this moment that Papa 468 had indicated a diversion to the up slow line and was very confused about what had occurred. The passengers were checked on by customer ambassadors at Peterborough and some minor injuries were reported. An off-duty driver who was travelling on the service at the time helped the driver to assess the damage of which none was found. Transpennine and Express control staff, who act as LUMO's control, requested that the off-duty driver take over operations from the other driver. This was done and the service departed Peterborough at 11.45 to complete its journey to London King's Cross. The customer ambassadors were encouraged to listen out for any unusual noise of vibration as the journey continued. The British Transport Police met passengers and crew at London King's Cross who took statements and breathalyzer tested the driver for alcohol and drugs. Following this, the unit was taken to Bounds Green Depot for examination, but miraculously, no damage was found, which was also the case for the points on the junction where the overspeed had occurred. Now we must ask, what caused this potentially fatal accident? The RIAB found that the immediate cause was the fact that one Yankee 80 passed over the junction at excessive speed. 
because the driver controlled the speed under the assumption that the train would stay on the up fast line. It was noted that the driver's awareness of the signal conditions were not sufficient enough. It was believed that the driver simply did not see the junction indicator instead of seeing the proceed aspect. Another reason could be the fact that the signal cycle did not operate as it usually would. In normal cases, on approach platform 1 or 2, the signals coming before PAPA 468 would present flashing yellow and double yellow signals to indicate a large decrease in the speed limit. In this case, from 125 miles an hour to 25 miles an hour. This would give drivers enough time to slow their train and recognise that they would be rooted into the slow lines. However, as there was a train occupying the signal block ahead, it was not possible. It is thought that this could have contributed to the incident. However, this was not a fault of the signalling system or the signaller. We can observe in this layout how the junction should have operated under normal conditions. However, this is how it operated due to the train ahead. It was noted that Lumo had failed to correctly train their drivers to correctly manage signal aspects. Lumo disagreed with this, stating that this was because this could lead to a driver making assumptions about how the signal could change and could lead to errors involving anticipation and assumption. It was also noted that Lumo did not assess the risks associated with trains being unexpectedly routed onto a slower diverging route. The driver was found to be fully competent and had been qualified for around two months at this time. The incident was treated with the utmost severity, especially considering the fact that the simulation showed that the train was dangerously close to overturning at that speed, with thoughts that the wheels most likely momentarily lifted from the track when crossing the junction. Following the incident, the driver was retrained and reassessed and was back on duty as of July 2023 when the report was published. Lumo's route learning was enhanced, all drivers were briefed, post-incident measures were modified and luggage handling was modified as a result. Unfortunately, this would not be the last time an incident occurred here, as just over a year later, a Grand Central Class 180 did the exact same thing, which is currently under investigation. The incident demonstrates the importance of understanding signals and route indicators to prevent incidents like this, as everyone was very lucky that the train did not overturn during this incident. It demonstrates why training is paramount and briefing your drivers correctly should always be the priority.